I recently had a video about affordable chemical sunscreens, but I got lots of requests for affordable mineral sunscreens. So today, I'm gonna share my favorite ones. If you're new to my channel, my name is Susan Yara. I have been in the beauty industry for two decades. I started off as a beauty editor. I now have my own skincare line, and on this channel, I love to talk about skincare and beauty in general. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. All right, so let's talk about mineral sunscreens. They're also known as inorganic sunscreens or inorganic filters, but for simplicity, I'm going to refer to them as mineral sunscreens because I think that's what people know them as. Mineral sunscreens are really popular here in the United States. I've come to find out that, you know, like in other countries, like in Europe and UK and stuff, the conversation about choosing mineral over chemical really isn't as big of a conversation as it is here in the US. I think that's because of the different types of sunscreen filters that have been approved here, which is is really kind of archaic. It's been a while since we've had new sunscreen filters. And what we tend to find is that mineral sunscreen filters are a little bit more gentle on the skin. So for people who have sensitive skin, who have children that they wanna use sunscreen on, women who are breastfeeding or pregnant, people that have just any kind of sensitivity to their skin, or even people who get irritation in their eyes from wearing sunscreen, they tend to look for mineral sunscreens instead. Mineral sunscreens are also really good, especially zinc oxide is really superior when it comes to broad spectrum protection. So that's protection from UVA rays and UVB rays. So a lot of people really like to go for mineral sunscreens. There are a whole other set of reasons why people choose mineral sunscreens. Some people, you know, there's a lot of fear mongering around sunscreen filters. There's also a lot of talk about how sunscreen filters can be damaging to the coral reefs and the environment and stuff. This is all really hard to understand information and really ambiguous and not really conclusive when it comes to what it is doing exactly. So it's one of those things where I think for people who are just unsure, they go for mineral sunscreens. But that said, sometimes mineral sunscreen isn't that great either because it can be thick, it can be pasty, it can be drying for the skin, and worse, it can leave a white cast on all skin tones, but even worse on people with deeper skin tones. For this video, I tried out a ton of different drugstore and affordable mineral sunscreens. What I'll tell you is that I really narrowed it down to only three sunscreens versus the chemical sunscreens video. I kept feeling like I wanted to add more and more sunscreens in there because there were just so many more options that felt really great on the skin. So I'll tell you, if you don't really care about, you know, like choosing mineral filters over chemical filters, you're gonna have an easier time finding affordable, nice, effective chemical filter sunscreens than you are with mineral sunscreens. As far as being affordable, I love a lot of mineral sunscreens that are pretty expensive, like Elta MD makes some of my favorite sunscreens. So if you are looking for something that's affordable and you want it to be mineral, it's a lot harder to find something. Unless of course you do not care about texture or you know white cast, any of that kind of stuff, you'll have an easier time finding. But as far as the sunscreens that I chose, I looked for really nice texture. I looked for an affordable price and I wanted to make sure that for the most part, you get minimal white cast. That said, I did find some affordable mineral sunscreens that I love, so I'm gonna share those with you. So the mineral sunscreen that works for most skin tones and for most skin types that we have found is this one from Samoa. This is the Sunshine Mineral Sunscreen Face and Body Lotion, SPF 45. It's also water resistant, up to 40 minutes. It has some fruit extracts that also deliver antioxidants, which we know are great in conjunction with your sunscreens because they fight free radicals. The active sunscreen filter in here is zinc oxide. It's in here at 19%. What I really like about this is that it feels nice and light and also moisturizing on the skin. I personally wear a light gel moisturizer underneath this, but I find it to be moisturizing enough to use on its own as long as you're using enough to cover all of your exposed skin. That's actually one of the big issues when it comes to using your sunscreen as a moisturizer as well. If you are one of those people that only dabs your moisturizer in specific places, then you have to have a separate sunscreen. But if you use your sunscreen as a moisturizer and you put it all over your face, then you should be fine with just this one product so you can really simplify your skincare routine. We even featured this sunscreen in our video titled Mineral Sunscreens for Black Skin. And this one by far was one of the best ones. Of the four people that tried this sunscreen, including the dermatologists, only one of them said that she didn't love it. But even at that, she said it was a really nice sunscreen. So this is one that I think would work for most skin types, most skin tones, and is very affordable at $16. Now, I know that $16 doesn't sound like it's that affordable, but when you take a look at the ounces, it's 
it's 3.4 fluid ounces. So it's actually a decent amount that you're getting with this sunscreen. And if you use it as a moisturizer, you are basically cutting out a whole product. Next up is this one from Cetaphil. This is their Sheer Mineral Face Liquid Sunscreen SPF 50. This one is also water resistant up to 80 minutes. The active ingredient is zinc oxide at 12% in this one. I find that this has more of a matte finish, so I would definitely use a thicker moisturizer underneath this one personally. I have spoken to some people with oily skin and they say that they still need to use a little bit of a moisturizer too, even if it's a gel one, to be able to get it to sit nicely on their skin because it does dry down so matte. That said, I really like the feel of this considering that it is a mineral sunscreen. One of the things that I hate about mineral sunscreens is that they can be really thick and heavy on the skin. This one it has this nice liquid texture to it. And as long as you really blend it nicely onto your skin, you'll see that it has a white cast at first, but as long as you continue to rub it in and kind of trust the process, the white cast I find goes away. That said, this one has a lot of like mixed reviews as far as the white cast goes. I've seen a couple of people with melanin rich skin tones say that this works perfectly fine on them and doesn't leave a white cast or a very minimal white cast on them. But then I've also seen other people say that this leaves them a terrible white cast, even people with light skin tones. So that's just something to keep in mind. I think it's a really nice sunscreen. It does not feel heavy at all. And it has a little bit of vitamin E in it too. So it's very conditioning, even though it's mattifying because I tend to hate mattifying products, especially sunscreens, and this one I actually really like. And another reason why I like this one is that it's great underneath makeup. So even if it does give you a little bit of a white cast, again, it doesn't give me a white cast, but if it gives you a little bit of a white cast, then you can just wear this underneath makeup and it actually works great as a primer. And then the last one is this by Bliss. This is their Blockstar Invisible Daily Sunscreen. One note, it's SPF 30. I think that's perfectly acceptable, especially if you're going to be inside most of the day. But lately the conversation is about wearing SPF 50 or at least a little bit higher than SPF 30 if you can't find an SPF 50 that you like. So that's one thing to note about this. I still think it's a really great sunscreen. It has more of a BB cream feel to it and it does have a tint, but it is a universal tint. So. For some skin tones, it might not work. I think this is a beautiful tint and it looks good on my skin. It tends to give me like this beautiful dewy glow to it. It's very hydrating, it's moisturizing. It has some essential oils in it that give it a scent. So if you're trying to avoid that in your sunscreen, then you might not like this one. But I love the texture and the feel of it. I could see some people with maybe oily skin not liking the texture because it does feel a little bit thicker, but I find that it really just blends in nicely and smoothly on the skin. Something that I found really interesting when it came to trying out sunscreens, including this one, is that we did an episode of Terrell Tries where the entire team tried out different mineral sunscreens, not just affordable ones. When it came to this sunscreen specifically, everybody on the team liked it, including Felicia, who has a deeper skin tone. But when it came to Terrell, he hated this one. It left him such a terrible white cast and didn't look good. Felicia, it looked beautiful on. And then when it came to you know a mineral sunscreen, I think it was the Super Goop one, Terrell loved it, but I hated it even though I have lighter skin. So it really just comes down to, again, skincare is really personal even when it comes to sunscreen and the white cast that it can potentially leave. So it was really just eye-opening to see all of us with different skin tones try these sunscreens. So those are some of my current favorite affordable mineral sunscreens. I want you to remember the best sunscreen is truly the sunscreen that you will enjoy using and use daily and reapply it. That is truly the trait that makes a good sunscreen. So don't get too fixated on whether there are specific ingredients that you're looking for, whether it's mineral or chemical, unless there's a very specific reason why you are trying to avoid some type of an ingredient, because really what it comes down to is protecting your skin and wearing your sunscreen religiously. It's so important in your skincare routine. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. You can find me on Instagram, I'm at Susan Yara, and I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.